from coops to covert operations, the US history of intervention in foreign affairs is a glaring example of how it habitually erodes the very notion of sovereignty for other nations. It's like the US has an addiction to being the helicopter parent of countries that never asked for its help. But this time, the US has done the unthinkable. In a stunning display of force, the White House invaded Venezuela's embassy in Washington, D.C. The move marks a significant escalation in the ongoing diplomatic conflict between the two countries. It has sparked outrage among human rights activists and international observers. The U.S. has committed a blunder of epic proportions. Hi and welcome to TFI Global Latin America, TFI Global's channel dedicated to the America in the Americas. I'm your host Shalini Tewari. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. If you're watching us on Facebook, do like, share and follow the page. Let's begin. The US government has taken possession of the Venezuelan embassy in Washington and other diplomatic sites in New York. People familiar with the situation said the State Department assumed control of the buildings on February 6. U.S. has violated the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, which states that embassies are considered the territory of their respective countries and should not be interfered with. But then again, when was the last time it honored any international conventions? With tensions between the U.S. and Venezuela at an all-time high, the invasion of the embassy signals a dangerous turning point in the deteriorating relationship between the two nations. In the last four years, the U.S. government has acknowledged Venezuela's opposition member, Juan Guaido, as the rightful leader of Venezuela and has fully acknowledged the interim government that he led. The move was an attack on Venezuela's democracy. Guaido had also appointed an ambassador who represented Venezuela in the U.S. The opposition in Venezuela is fragmented with no popular support, yet going against the public opinion, Washington continued to support it. Washington is highly critical of the elected Venezuelan president, Nicolas Maduro, and doesn't recognize him as a legitimate leader. Furthermore, the U.S. is also accused of interfering with the Venezuelan elections and attempting to overthrow Maduro's government. The U.S.-backed Guaido administration ran parallel to the government of President Nicolas Maduro in Caracas. It was also given power over foreign holdings, including oversight of the parent company of the American oil refiner Citco Petroleum Corporation. Basically, the will of the citizens carry no weight in front of U.S. interests. However, the U.S. was dealt a heavy blow in December. Opposition lawmakers voted to terminate the interim government, resulting in Guaido's removal. Consequently, Carlos Vecchio, Guaido's ambassador to the United States, immediately resigned from his post. The opposition legislators appointed Fernando Blasi to serve as a new representative. The envoy, who was not chosen by an executive branch, was refused a prolongation of his diplomatic rights by the US. Basically, he was not the one which U.S. wanted. Opposition's choice be damned. He won't parrot what the U.S. wants. At least 12 people had been functioning outside the embassy and diplomatic dwellings last week. Then they were disallowed access to the structures. In January, they were told they had 30 days to work out their immigration status. The Joe Biden administration said that it has taken steps to respect and protect the assets of diplomatic missions that have been suspended in accordance with the Vienna Convention and the Foreign Missions Act. Yes, only US can justify the invasion of a country's embassy through laws and conventions despite violating them. This leaves US in an almost comical conundrum. It doesn't recognize Maduro and doesn't let him appoint an ambassador to the US. However, now there isn't anyone in the opposition which it can bank upon. Alas, no one to wag their tail for Washington. Remember, the 2015 National Assembly, which was legitimately elected, is still recognized by the United States as the last democratic institution in Venezuela. Now, if it actually recognizes the opposition, it has 
to at least let them appoint an ambassador. The situation is further complicated by the fact that the US has imposed economic sanctions on Venezuela, which have had a devastating effects on the country's economy. These sanctions have been criticized by many countries, including China and Russia, who have accused the US of economic warfare. It's time US recognizes Maduro's government and gives the embassy back to his government, even with a heavy heart. The incident also shows where U.S. stands in Venezuela right now. It has been wiped out of the Latin American country. No amount of isolating and sanctioning is going to bother Maduro anymore.